And we have a bird's opening here. Henry Bird's opening. Pawn to F4. Definitely not recommended for beginners. We want you to occupy the center. The C5 is played. Knight F3, G6, E3, Bishop G7, D3, E6. Now E6 is... Um, the point of e6, even though it creates a hole on f6, is when you have this open long diagonal, you'd rather not obstruct it with your knight. And so you need a place for your knight to go. So e6 is played in these lines, um, in lines like this. This is actually the first, this is already the first unique move. But I've seen a similar structure in other games where the point is the the player of the black does not want to obstruct that diagonal and therefore place e6 and though it creates a hole it gives you a place to put your knight that's the idea and sure enough that's exactly what she does so we're already in uncharted territory though on just move six and after castles, knight b to c6. And pawn jumps up to e4. Pawn to d6. And now pawn to c3. Uh, obstructing that diagonal. Uh, and therefore liberating the dark squared bishop. Castles and the bishop surely plays to e3. Now, rook to b8. Now, what's the point of this move? Well, you can expect the pawn on b7 uh, to begin marching forward. So, pawn to d4 and pawn to f4. And now we've got a big pawn chain blocking up the dark squared bishop. Maya strikes at... Uh, Maya, I did it again. Nona. Why do I keep saying my? I have such a mental block. That makes me mad. Is there any kind of an angry face? Um, maybe we can give a wait what here from Coach. Why do I keep saying Maya? All right. And so separates the pawns and then weakens the structure a bit. So knight to d5, bishop to c1, and now you have a super attack going against the f4 pawn, which is defended by g3. And now striking right at the center of the board, D takes E5, D takes E5, opens the D file, and um, pawn now, as was prepared, pawn moves to B5. And after knight uh, C3 and queen B6 check, building this nice battery here with tempo, um, the king played to g2 uh, yeah g2 now rook to d8 getting in line with another target so knight takes d5 invites the rook to put heat on the queen and that invitation is accepted and responded to with queen to b3 and queen to b3 as you can see gets in line with the king. Now the bishop is relocating from h6 to f8 and will be making its way to the a7 g1 diagonal before long. And in fact, um, bishop to e3 pretty much compels that move. The bishops are traded off at c5. And then rook f to d1 is played. This is actually looking 
pretty good for white. Um, white has one pawn advanced into black's house. White's pieces are a little bit more centralized and well black still has one of his pieces in the bed. This is looking pretty good. Well you have this super attack here and if everything were traded off that E-man would be a passer. So another defender is necessary therefore knight to e7. Now the queen gets put in danger with white's last piece getting out of bed. Jumping to the open c file, putting the question to the black queen. And that queen moves to b6, the rooks are traded on d5, and now we have a tactical situation here where you have an overworked rook. Remember what an overworked piece is, simply a piece that has more work than it could possibly do. So this rook here attacking the bishop, therefore this rook has to defend the bishop. Therefore, this pawn is under super attack with only one real defender. Uh, because, okay, so after queen captures if queen were to have captured here, then uh, the bishop captures. And as you can see, bishop cannot be captured else rook captures and then black is in uh, a little bit of trouble. So, uh, so amazingly though, um, Nona, Nona leaves her unprotected rook exposed to the queen. Well, it's actually hitting white's unprotected rook. So after queen takes b8, oh, that wasn't what it was hitting at all. Ha <laughs> ha, surprise. It was hitting the unprotected bishop with check. Um, oh, I didn't tell you, by the way, this was played at uh, the Varnyaka Banya uh, tournament, um, 1961, uh, November 1961. No day given, but the month is given. And um, so Lazarevich. Uh, Milunka Lazarevich being the white opponent here. So nifty little move here. It says, you can have my rook. I'm forking your two unprotected pieces. Well, I'm not going to take your rook. I'm taking your bishop with check. Forcing your king into uh, the h3 square and I'm gonna cut that king off now okay question why not take this bishop with either the queen uh, or the rook anybody okay after queen takes bishop you have knight takes the pawn on f4, check. And the pawn can't take back because if you do, you're mated in two. <laughs> now, I think what happens if the king moves to h4? I'm not sure what black's continuation is here. Uh, 
I don't think she has time to play queen to h2. I mean, g2. If she plays queen to g2. No, you can't because white can give check followed by mate. Yeah. So actually, this would have been a way for white to draw here. But I think white feels confident that she's winning. Um, well, she must have understood that the bishop couldn't be captured, and that's why she gave the check. If you take the bishop, I think there is a draw here. Because now I'm pretty sure black has to just take the perpetual. And I think white probably saw that and felt she was winning, so she captured the pawn on a7 with check. And after king to h6, the queen drops back to a3. Defending the knight, defending this pawn, more importantly, defending the knight. King to h5. Now, that's creating the mating net here. Rook attacks the queen. Queen moves to f2. I think this is, I think white's okay right up until um, this move. I think that's a blunder. And then after queen f2, white played queen d3. <laughs> Nona Attacks the queen with an unprotected rook. Let's see who our f new follower is here. Cosmic Dean is now following. Welcome, Cosmic Dean, uh, to the program. White played queen to d1. <laughs> Knight to e3, rook takes, and instead of queen takes rook, you've got this beautiful um, mate in two. After the only way out of this is queen takes, white resigned, because the only way out is queen takes, which is checkmate on the next turn. So another beautiful series of moves here. I think white was really winning right here up until this point. Jacuzzi. Hello, Jacuzzi. I think white's still great here. But... Mm, I'm not sure... I'm pretty sure this is the losing move. What should white play instead? You have to defend these squares, it looks like. Well, what if you... Well, hold on. You're able to block, so this no longer works. This is defending this. It could, we can't push this. If you push and he takes, we can't take with the knight. I can't take with the knight because then you're, you've got queen g4 check. You've got Knight takes f4 check. 
You've got um, bishop b7 check. Yeah, this is just losing. This is just losing. All you can do now is stall. So it has to, if you play this line, it would have to be taken with the pawn. And I'm not real clear. I, I think white's fine here. I'm not real clear on how black continues. Get your bishop into the game. But these pawns can be problems. This could be pretty problematic for um, black now. But nonetheless, that is not what happened. Instead, bada bing, bada boom. Beauty. Yeah, of course, black's going to capture the, the rook, right? No. Why would you when you have mate and two? Sweet, sweet finish.